Hi, this is Raquel. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to build a balloon arch with Publisher. And uh, it's a little tedious. I will also show you how to save it so that you will never have to hopefully build it again. So we're going to start with um, we're going to start by, by actually creating the arch itself, the arch shape. And I'm going to do that by creating a half circle. And how do I know it's a half circle? Because I'm, I'm lining it up with this line right down here. So we're going to be making an arch that's, oh, looks like it's about twice the width as it is high. Okay, if you want to make a tall, long, a tall, shorter one, I'm going to get rid of this, the shape fill. There we go, so we can see through it. So you can control what size arch you prefer to work with, okay? Um, understand that when you're building an arch, basically it's, it's only half of the, of the ellipse. So line up these dots right here with the bottom of your page, which would be like the floor or the tabletop or whatever you're building an arch on. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back out again so that we have a nice rounded arch. Okay, so now we got to build the balloons that are going to go on it. So we're going to go, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull another circle out. And we'll make it about that big. And look at that, I happen to nail it. So we're going to go ahead and put, put it on. One there, I'm going to copy and paste and put the other duplet on, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and group those two group them and we're going to copy and paste and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, ungroup it for just a moment so I can go ahead and copy and paste this third balloon in here just like that and we're going to group that again okay so now it's just a it's just building them. It's just copying and pasting each quad as they come up. I'm going to undo this one and put these balloons a little bit closer together. Whoops. I just moved one of them. I say whoops a lot, don't I? Okay, we're going to group them together again, just like that. Okay, so we're going to copy and we're going to paste this puppy and we're going to put them up here. And it needs to start rotating a little bit. And there's a couple of different ways that you can rotate. You can either grab this and rotate it, or you can come up here and there is a rotation that you can control right down to the one thousandths of a degree if you want to do it that way. Um, I find it's okay to just grab it here and go. Okay, so one of the things that you want to be thinking about when you're doing this is the fact that the balloons over on this side are going to get scrunched a little bit. I'm going to pull this one forward. And remember that these side balloons in the cluster of three need to be in the back, not towards the front. Okay, so now we're going to copy this one, copy and paste, and we're going to drag them up. And we're going to rotate them, just like that. And we're going to try to keep them lined up with our line. Imagine that being the line there. And we're going to send him back a little bit. Uh, where's my alignment? Why is he not letting me send him back? There it goes. Okay, so I'm going to pull him up a little bit and over. Okay, that's all it is. So once you get that done, I'm going to show you how you can save it because I think this is excellent work for everybody to do on their own. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'm going to just keep going around and I will come back to you in just a moment. So I'm just continuing to work these around. I wanted to point something else out to you uh, to help keep things lined up. Is you will see these two points right here when you're rotating your clusters around, if you try to line those up with the line, with our arch guideline, then it should uh, 
work out a little bit better and it will properly compress these inner balloons as you come around the, the curve. Uh, the tendency is to not want to compress that inside curve, but when you build an arch, that's what's happening, right? It's getting compressed. So uh, the other thing you want to watch for too is to make sure that the uh, the balloons are being moved forward and backward properly. Yep, so far so good. So we'll just keep working around. I'll do one more here with you watching and then I'll go away again and keep working it around. But literally this is, it's tedious. There's probably more efficient ways to do it. I have not had any classes in Publisher. I've just learned over the last 20 years how to manipulate the software to get what I want. And uh, this is certainly effective. And once I have built it and I have saved it, I don't ever have to build it from scratch again. That's what's pretty cool about this. I don't know why I have to reselect that. And I'm constantly learning new things about the software too. Sometimes you'll hear me talking to myself or wondering why something's doing something weird. Uh, that's why I am a balloon artist first and a graphic artist by, uh, by default, by necessity. Is trying to explain to a graphic artist what we want, what we need. It'd be quicker just to draw it out manually ourselves, wouldn't it? Okay, this one I'm going to pull out a little bit more because this balloon is supposed to be in the front, like that. So, right, keep going around, copy and paste. So the keyboard functions, I am on a PC. I don't know anything about Mac, so if any of you Mac people out there are feeling uh, compelled to create a tutorial, that would be helpful. I'm on a PC. I'm running Publisher 2013. It came bundled with my Office, with the Microsoft Office package that I bought. I am not on the 365. I kind of like to own my software. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned that way. I'm going to keep that one there and pull this one down a little bit and send them back. Okay. If you don't like the gap here, for example, let me ungroup that. If this little gap in there is bothering you, you can just bring the, let me ungroup them. You can bring the balloons together a little bit more. In fact, that's that would probably actually look better, wouldn't it? So, uh, you can see that you can spend a lot of time doing this. Uh, in some of my other tutorials I do show how I save my pictures so I'm not having to redo them. I'm going to do a shift and I'm going to pick up that balloon and I'm going to copy and paste the whole, all both, both clusters. Okay, so I'm going to recluster this one, regroup it, my group and then I can drag them back into place just like that. Pull them forward a little bit. And this one you can see where the the guide is way up there so I need to rotate that one down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to tuck them back in. There we go. What else can I tell you while I'm doing this? Oh, so, yeah, that's another. So, uh, Pioneer does put out a, um, does put out some free clip art that you can use, but what I have found is you, it downloads in a GIF file and a graphic interface something or other file, a GIFF file, and I can't color those in very well using Microsoft Paint. It has to be a TIFF file, and I was able to convert them over to a TIFF file, but it's been years and I don't remember how I did it, frankly. 
I think I used Microsoft Draw, which has been uh, out of commission since 2002, 2003, when they obsoleted it. So that's where using a product like uh, Photoshop or Corel Draw or InDesign or I don't know, one of the Adobe products might be a better thing. Um, but I like using what I got. There we go. And like I said, you do this once, you build it once, you might have to build a couple more, like a, maybe a, a flat arch or a slightly different size arch. But typically, what I tell the customers is this is what the arch is going to look like, but it will be scaled to your table, the doorway, whatever. And of course, having been doing this for 20 years, I have a lot of my own pictures now that I can show them. This is what the arch will look like at the doorway, and then I can digitally mock it up in their colors. So more often than not, that's what I'm doing now with the, the digital mock-ups. It's just to, to be able to show it in their colors. They really seem to like that a lot. And let's see what else. And you can also show different patterns. Uh, I've got a, a colleague out here, his signature pattern is more of a stripe. Mine, I, I don't think I, whoops, that needs to go in the back. I really don't have a signature. See, I sent that all the way in the back, and so my, my guide uh, moved forward to the balloon. I didn't want to do that. I'm going to pull this one up a little bit more. There we go. Uh, I did it again. Look at that. And that one needs to come forward. Okay. I'm not usually talking when I'm doing these. So I don't, I don't really have a signature pattern per se. Striped patterns are easy. I think they're, they're a little bit easier to maintain than a, a spiral pattern. Most people like spiral patterns because that's what they know. If you show them other patterns, uh, you can sell them on other patterns. That's what I have found. People buy what they know, and if they didn't know that other patterns were available, they won't know to ask for them. So look at that. I think we've got, we're just about done. Isn't that pretty slick? So, not exactly uh, symmetrical, but good enough for mocking things up. So why do I say it's not symmetrical? Because I started with two showing and I'm ending with three showing and it's going to be a little tight here. So we can take the time and move everything up and over a pixel and just just like with real balloons if you need to end on a certain color and it's not quite there you can move all your quads out like a quarter of an inch, a half an inch depending on how many you're working with and it, you can you can make things fit balloon art is very very forgiving very forgiving look at that almost like in real life. So that's a little bit tighter and I could probably loosen this side up a little bit. Oops, going the wrong way. So that's how to make a balloon arch with doing uh, circles. I think the key is, whoops, to uh, to to group them together. When I learned how to group things together, uh, that really changed things. So I'm going to ungroup this and I'm going to move move it closer together a little bit more, tighten up that gap a little bit more. Okay, just like that. So, okay, that's, that's good enough. So we're going to go ahead and delete our guide there's our arch. I'm going to go ahead and select it all like that 
and I am going to get rid of the blue color. I'm going to change it all to white, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to save it as a building block. And I'm going to call this a cluster arch, and if I wanted to give it dimensions or whatever, I'm anal enough that I would actually count how many quads there are, and I would tell myself this is a 25 cluster arch, or however many clusters there are in it. And I'm going to click OK, and it's going to save it as a picture. So what does this do for us? Well, let's make that all go away. We're going to delete it. And I have a button here called Page Parts, and I can click on that, and I can now see some of the other uh, building blocks that I have created in the past. So there's my arch, just like that. So I can call it up, whoops, I can call it up, and I can start coloring it in. So let's say we want to start down here. Whoops, wrong one. Actually, I need to ungroup it, that's right. I need to ungroup everything. So now I can start filling it in. I want to do my orange. Oh, I'm going to have to ungroup it again. Ungroup it twice. Ungroup. Okay, now they're individual balloons. So remember, you can click and you can hold your shift key down and you can click on multiple balloons. Let's say we want to do a second color in here. I'm going to hold my shift key down and let's say we're going to do yellow and we can shift it down, select the next spiral, and let's call that lime, and then we can do this other color out here, and let's do that a pretty shade of blue. Okay, I've got a four color, spot, four color spiral going. So if the workspace is getting a little tight for you, you need it a little bit bigger, you can control your zoom right here, uh, I find that's easier to work with sometimes, especially when you're working with clusters. So we can go ahead and highlight, or select that one, hold the shift key down, and pick the next stripe. And that next stripe will be yellow again. So we'll go here and pick the yellow. Okay? Just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Let's say that you wanted to try to match the colors for, I was going to put that one orange actually. Let's say you wanted to try to match a, a balloon color. I have some uh, latex colors loaded in here already in, in a, a folder. Let's see, let's go down here and actually pick a color. I primarily use Qualitex color, so let's go with this wild berry, okay? So I've, I pulled this up just, just for the color. So let's say I'm going to do a wild berry color here, a wild berry stripe. I'll go ahead and select them. And then when I go to do my fill, that's what the bucket is, is the fill, I can go in and do a sample fill color, and I can actually click on the balloon. Okay? So let's say I clicked on another part of the balloon, because there's all sorts of wonderful uh, highlighting and things on it, I can click a different part of the balloon and it's a, a, a different shade of pink. So if you're going to do a sample fill color, do try to get where the color is most saturated. Also keep in mind that your monitor may or may not be calibrated properly to pick up on the colors for Pioneer. The customer may have their monitor colored differently, so don't assume that the colors you see on your monitor are going to be the colors that your client sees on their monitor. So, what else can I tell you? I think that's it. There you go. Raquel with Balloon Splendor.